Here we are then. Thank you. One. Coffee. Coffee. And coffee. if we have coffee, coffee. and we're sat around the coffee, virtual coffee, coffee, campfire, coffee. around our kitchen table, kitchen you know table what campfire. that means, don't you? Does that mean... Hang on, hang on, hang on. That means it's... Hog's watch. No. That means it's... I can't think of another festival. Soul Cake Duck. Soul Cake Tuesday? Soul Cake Tuesday. Wednesday? Monday? Something. Soul Cake Day? Yeah. No. No? Uh-uh. In that case, there's only one thing left it could possibly be. What's that? Frithcast? It's time for Frithcast. Frithcast! <laughs> means you need to go back and listen to a couple of episodes backwards well generally you listen to them forwards but you could sit backwards you could do either yeah you could listen to them backwards you could listen to pod our podcasts backwards and see if we've embedded any secret subliminal messages in there backwards spoiler alert we haven't <laughs> well <laughs> come on this is us i know we have enough trouble putting them in forwards we put that we put that um yeah, but they don't know about that. Yeah. I don't the, know whether they've worked that one out. Yet. Don't those... say it. Don't say it. I wanna don't say it. I know you wanna, but you know we'll wait and see how long it takes somebody to to twig. Well, they're not looking for them, so they won't find them. Well, no, but that's kind of you know, actually that's very um, what is word on message. Should we even narrow it down? What episode was it anyway? I can't remember. I can't remember. Never mind. It's not that many to go through, only like 30-odd episodes. I can't remember to save my life. What was the episode about? I know what the episode was about. What was the episode about? Well, you see, if we tell you what the episode was about, they'll go looking for it on that particular episode. So I'll tell you when we turn the mics off. Well, let... Oh, I was going to say, let's do that now, but that's too complicated. Yeah, it is. If it's a big red button that says, like, press here to self-destruct. No. Or the, 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 the huge one you put next to the launch button that makes coffee. <laughs> it's a good cup of joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Were we going to actually talk about anything heathen related? Yeah, go on then. Um, we'd better actually start and say hi properly. Hello proper. Hi properly. Okay. I nearly made a mess of that. You did. But you got the cue. It was there. <laughs> it's Welcome. next to the P. No. Hey, no peeing on this podcast. Sorry. Just behave yourself. Manners. You know, there's there's decent-ish people listening. <laughs> decent-ish people. <laughs> we love you all. We do. Welcome all, all of lovely. listeners round the virtual campfire for episode 38 of Frithcast. Which is where we'd put the music if we hadn't already done it. We've already done it. Ah, you uh, see. We can do it again. No, we don't need to do it again. Okay. Don't need to do it again. Right, what are we talking about today, episode 38 of Frithcast? Well, we best say hi and say who we are, just in case we've got new bods who are kind of, you know, just shuffling in around the please? virtual campfire and finding a space. Won't you please introduce yourself? Who are you? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> but for today, that's, that's a bit, you know... That's a bit big and deep for this Who earlier. Are you? Ah! No, um, I'm Suzanne Martin. I'm an ambassador for a, an organisation called TAC, which is the Asatra community. Indeed. And I'm the other person who lives in this house. That's good. And I'm, well, not, inclu not including the cat, obviously. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm the other human person that lives in, human-ish person that lives in this house. Give a take. And yeah. I'm not a heathen, uh, but I hang around heathens a lot especially you that's me not, not you listener i mean i <clears throat> i mean i'd I gladly i'd gladly associate with you yeah, listener. you know, you know come I'd, out, I'd have a drink, chill out yeah. drink coffee all that. it's all good yeah but i tend to hang around with suzanne a lot on account of being married to her we did do that didn't we 
We did. We did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So did I. Good day. Mm. Good two days. Good, yeah, two and a bit days. It's all good. Two so, days of Romano heathen... Stuff. Jiggery per... No, no. That's a bad word. I don't think we'd do that for Romano two Romano heathen... <laughs> Can't manage 20 minutes these days. <laughs> Come on. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you do. That's why you've gone pink. Oh. <laughs> it's the weather. <laughs> it's been very warm around here. <laughs> Sudden localised heat wave in your seat. <laughs> what I thought we'd have a chat about today is I've been thinking on recently on the the lovely heathen peeps out there amongst our lovely listeners and in the wider heathen world. Community. world community. That's the word I'm looking for. In the wider heathen community that are uh, maybe just exploring their heathen path and don't feel ready to share mm-hmm. or don't feel that they get a good reaction from the people around them or are just starting to understand this path this way and may not have met another heathen in person yeah. may not have done a whole lot of posting online and may just want to kind of lurk about a bit people who are perhaps in a in a uh, a I say real life as if online stuff isn't real, um, but you know we have this tradition of saying online and real life. But yes. you know people who are who, who in, are in a, in a real life, life community situations. where heathenry might not be well understood, regarded, yeah, or or understood, or people will will you know might be a little bit distrusting of it, that kind yeah. of thing. So I was I've been given a lot of thought recently about how might I help somebody connect more with the gods and goddesses if they don't feel they can yet talk online mm-hmm. and have a discussion online if they're not being able to make that connection in in physical life yeah what are some of the ways that might help them make those connections and start exploring that path at a deeper level especially if they don't want to have books in their home yeah or they might not be able to meet somebody else to talk about it all that kind of thing there's a, a particular word that is used in some of the old law, and it's called a kenning. 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 K e double n, ing. Ing. Yes. Kenning. Kenning. Mm-hmm. And a kenning is where you use to describe something in metaphor. Okay. And it's used a lot in the sagas. There's an example of it in the Havamal, where they, they describe something by describing it as something else, which sounds a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try and give you an example. Okay. In the ruin poems, mm. you've got a verse about water, which where it says, and the seahorse heeds not the bridle on the whale road. And you think, what is that all about? Because it doesn't make sense. Just one second. <clears throat> Let me just do that again. The seahorse heeds not the bridle on the whale road. That is awesome. It is a bit wicked, isn't it? So here you've got the seahorse. It's hyphenated. So it's, it's the... The mechanism by which you travel on the sea so it's like a horse on land and it's heeding not the bridle we're not talking then about the little floaty curly things that look like fern leaves but are actually alive people with eyeballs and big noses no not that and and they're awesome they go through the water like that yeah no not that kind of seahorse like little helicopters I know I've got a shield wall of seahorses in my brain. No, it's not that they kind look, of seahorse. They look like a sort of treble clef, but with wings. and They, could... they do kind of look like a little seaborne treble clef. It's not mm. that kind of seahorse. Okay. Prawns are so base clef. Yes, I suppose they are. Mm. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. So if you've got the seahorse heeds not the bridle, mm-hmm. you've got a method of transportation which is not doing what you expect it to do. Okay. So when your horse doesn't heed the bridle, it's deciding where it wants to go. So when the sea horse, the, the boat, the ship, okay. heeds not the bridle, yeah. you're not only using the kenning for a ship yeah. or a boat, but you're also saying it's behaving in a manner like a horse that doesn't heed the bridle. Okay, so the, you, your kenning is getting a, not only the idea of the ship across with, a, uh, as you say, a metaphorical... I love seahorse as a ship. I think that's great. Yeah. But that that's so that's basically so you're getting information across in a almost in code. Yes. Yeah. It's um, and if you talk about the whale road for the Viking peoples, they're using the sea as a basically 
a, a motorway, and I've temporarily forgotten what the American word for motorway is. Freeway? I think they'll, I think they'll understand motorway. motorway. A, big, a big, wide, high-speed road. Big, wide, high-speed road. No traffic lights, no roundabouts. Turn left at Albuquerque and you've got it. <laughs> they're basically using the sea not as a boundary or a border, but they're using it as their high-speed motorway to go everywhere. Yeah. This is their bit that connects all of their other bits. This is not their boundary. Okay. This is their way of manoeuvring. This is their way of going other places very quickly. Mm. So a whale road is the, the canning for the sea. Okay. So it's all these sort of layers of meaning that are built up like a big trifle cake there's no. layers of things on top of each other no i want trifle cake <laughs> i was trying to think of a good <laughs> word and i couldn't think of one but yeah it, you yeah i understand so that's that's a kenning so that's a kenning so... and, and and i know i mean i'm assuming kenning comes from no as it does as in to know something to Ken. Um, as it does in, in Scotland. Yes, um, if you say, dear Ken, mm. when you're in Scotland, do you understand something? Do you know something? Yeah. There's even a rune, Kenas, so Kenning, to understand the double meaning of something. And it's usually a very, very compact phrase that has a lot of meanings fitted into it. I find myself mm -hmm. really wishing I could remember the name of the episode. Okay. The name of the character, other than the one I know. Okay. And any of the things they said. Okay. But my memory has failed me almost entirely on this, except to say that there is an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh -huh. Wherein Captain Picard ends up on a planet. He on does. On the surface of a planet. Yes. With another, <laughs> an, a, 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 the a captain piece. of an alien ship. Yep. And they are trying to communicate. And the alien captain... Uh, comes from a society that speaks entirely in metaphor and reference. Yes. So they their whole method of communication is to make reference to events in their stories, their mythologies, their legends, and yes. so on. And these things are known by all of them. So they have, you know, their their Shared their society understanding has, it, is yeah, it. Yes. yes has this absolute understanding that if you say such a person and such a person at such a place. Yes. Um, and that's one of the most, I forget the names, but it's one of the most most repeated phrases through the show. Yeah. Um, we'll put the link in the description. We will put the link in. We'll sort out <laughs> we'll what the episode's it. called <laughs> and we'll put the link in. But essentially, yeah, so so, so somebody and somebody at somewhere. Yeah. Everybody on that in that society will understand yes. what you're trying to say. You're drawing a comparison between this in event where these two people at this place did a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, Picard is trying to deal with this, but he doesn't have access to any of the cultural context or the, yep. the, the mythology. So translation is not enough. Yeah, You've so got to have the cultural context in there as well. And it's only when he eventually <laughs> he eventually sort of clicks on what's happening, but he mm. has to start trying to work in. He's he's trying to communicate by using references to human mythology, yes. or at least Federation, yeah, you know, mythology. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds like it's a similar sort of thing. So these little sets of, of, of words that put certain people together or certain places yeah and that tells you if you have the knowing of it if you have the kidding <clears throat> of it i guess yes that tells you the whole understanding if i give you a, a modern example if you work in retail and your staff in retail and you are looking at the black friday sales or the new year's day sales yeah you might turn to your colleague and say i feel like i'm standing at thermopylae yeah because, because because I feel like I'm a Spartan at Thermopylae. Because yeah. you'll know what that feeling. You're feels you're like. you're waiting yes. to open the open the door. Yep. Uh, and there's going to be this flood of of, of, <laughs> of people coming in people through coming a very in. small gap. Very small gap, and there's just you and your mate. Yep. To try to mm -hmm. fend them all off. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. Yeah. 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 So it's understanding cultural reference. So mm. I wondered if we could apply that understanding of cultural references for people who you know maybe want to explore their connection with the gods a bit deeper maybe don't feel that they can have books out openly in the house or might not know where their next nearest heathen bodies or be able to talk to somebody what are the ways that they could connect how can we code how can we code that cultural understanding of 
the gods and goddesses into something that they can use. Because of course, in the modern day, we don't have we don't have the same cultural context that a no. Satru, if if I can in use that phrase, century, had. No, you know, we the don't. 10th century we have a different of culture modern now. Satru. So I thought, what is a way that we can use for those folks that? Or maybe for folks that are well established, maybe it's another way of connecting to another facet. Maybe mm -hmm. it's maybe it's something that you know folks can try. Yeah. But I thought about making a playlist of tracks where each track would remind you, or reminds me in my case specifically of a particular god, a particular goddess, a particular situation of one member of the Aesir or Vanir talking to another member of the Aesir or Vanir. Okay. And what that relationship is between those two people. So when I hear that track, I'm thinking, yes, I know that relationship. And for those three and a half minutes, four and a half minutes, six minutes, whatever, I'm keyed into focusing on what that person is saying to another person or what that track is telling me about that deity. So almost like uh, you, you, you associate a particular piece of music with... Can I... The, the one that's come straight mm. into my head again. I'm I'm so sorry. I can only I can only apologise <laughs> on. again to to the heathen community at large for the fact that try as I might, mm -hmm. a lot of the imagery that I have of, of of the Norse gods, I am afraid, comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, fair play, yeah. And when you say okay, what well, what sort of what sort of songs or what kind of music? I mean, the 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 the, the wonderful piece at the end of um, I think it's just called Earth to Asgard, and that is a just such a powerful piece of music. I find, and it, mm. and it always makes me think of or Thor particularly. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I just as an example, if I wanted to meditate on Thor, or I wanted to. You know, yeah, you just, might just put focus, that piece of music on focus and... on him. I could put that music on yeah. and, and, and sort of just get into it, just sort of sink into the... Yeah, and just kind of be there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it would be good for things, you know, having a playlist. I can make myself a playlist for the car. Yeah. And sit and listen to 20, 30, 40 tracks, each with a different association. And they're associations and, that you've come up with. And they're associations that I'm thinking, yes, that, that connects for me. Mm. So again, this is very personal. This is UPG. This is this is my thing. But it's not to say you can't modify it for your own thing. If there's a piece of classical music, if there's a piece of modern instrumental music where you just think, yes, that's my connection. That's the image I'm getting. A rock track or a oh, piece of God, folk yes. music? Or... or folk, yeah, anything where you think that says this person to me mm. that so, says this situation that says this event to me then you know consider making a playlist that way if you are somebody where you might not be able to share those associations with your family or your friends put the playlist on in the car and all they will hear is music yeah what you will get is 45 minutes of meditation time of, essentially yeah. of chilling out time of going yep these are my connections this is this is how i'm going to try and find that so connection. i suppose i suppose you and so i suppose you might do individual tracks for certain people i, yes. I say people yeah. deities yeah, yeah. whatever gods heroes whatever it might be you might have tracks that associate with them specifically or you might yeah. have tracks that associate with places that yeah, are important you might or create a ideas. playlist that is all for one deity that mm. just has different facets of that deity's character that member of the AC Rovania or you might put a whole range of tracks in for everybody for events for things that happen for places mm. For the nine worlds, you know, pick a track for each of the nine worlds and put them into a playlist. So bearing in mind the intrinsic personal subjectivity of this, and yeah. that, you know, everybody's going to have, everybody's going to come at that and go, well, I would, you know, like like me with that that track. But the my my suggestion of Earth to Asgard was was fairly mm. straightforward because yeah. it's from yeah, a yeah. film about Thor. So, um, but you might find you might find associations in all sorts of different. I mean. I'm, I'm going to say to you, bearing in mind that it's personal. It is personal. Do you have any examples? I'm going to give you some of my examples. Okay. Because these are some of the connections that I've listened to pieces of music and they're the imagery or they're the thoughts or the feelings that have come to my mind. With it being UPG, you might have completely different feelings. Yeah. But this list might be a place to start creating your own playlist of modern music, of ancient music, of, you know, I've got pop songs. Yeah. Find pop songs. And if you think, there are 
aren't any pop songs that do that then you know maybe there are a couple and maybe that's where you can start some of those work really well for me you mean modern rhythm type music modern rhythm type music <laughs> i've got some of the ones where i've heard a track and thought that resonates with me with this okay person or this god or this event if i give you some of mine you'll kind of see what i mean yeah, and we yeah. started with freya with salute by little mix oh Moving on, yep. R E S P E C T, Aretha Franklin. What is it? It means to me. Oh yeah, love yep. that one. Yeah, big stumpy song. Indeed. If we go to Frey, he of the he who don't half look like his picture. He of the accoutrement. Yeah. <laughs> then for me, I've seen his statues. So have I. <laughs> Carol, you're like oh my goodness. <laughs> You could just about how you could hang all the <laughs> teaspoons off that. It's like, oh, Frey, yes, Frey. We are so good. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, We're getting smitten. We're gonna, they're gonna smite us. Oh, I'm gonna getting happen. smitten, but probably not by. <laughs> I give up. I'm just gonna stop talking. <laughs> Go on. Sorry, I got Tell distracted me. by Frey's accoutrement. Tell me about Frey's no tunes, tunes. 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 Tunes, tunes, tunes. Summertime. Okay. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Oh yes. That is fabulous. A big summer track for me. That is that is a, a serious blast from the nineties. Serious blast awesome. from the nineties. Why? Oh, because it's just this. No, it's this gloriously warm kind of relaxing summer, chilling out with your friends and everything is good and you can just sit and settle and that is very fray to me. Okay. The other... And that's the thing. It's it's all about what you, what yeah. you perceive a particular song to be saying, what you perceive a particular god to be sort of standing for, and yeah, yeah. There's two others for him. One of them, Fields of Gold. Oh crikey. Eva Cassidy. Oh crikey, no. Oh yes, because oh, it's glorious. Oh, it is. Don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic song, but I can't listen to it. I'll not sing it then. You can if you want. As long as you don't mind me being a gibbering puddle on the floor. I can do that. Okay. You remember me When the west wind moves Among the fields of barley That one? That one. We'll forget the sun in his jealous sky As we lie in fields of gold I never made promises lightly And there have been some that I've broken But I swear with the days still left We will walk in fields of gold I know. Okay, you'll have to do the rest of the Frith cast on your own. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got something in your eye, dear. I've got something in both eyes. <laughs> Tears! I've got tears. That's what they are. Oh bless you! Not mess about. Well, the I know other... it's a, it is a, it's a fantastic song. I couldn't, I cannot speak highly enough of that song. But I it's, know. but um, it does do things, doesn't it? It does do things, especially given, especially the Eva Cassidy version, just because of Eva Cassidy, her, you know, her her story and so on. But anyway, well, the other one that I love for Frey is called Diablo Rojo. Oh, go on, sing that. I can't. <laughs> It's two guitars. It's done by Rodrigo y Gabriela. Yeah. And it is very much a kind of sensual Spanish guitar piece. Oh, it's just, it just... And it crackles to me. And yeah. And it is him. You know those over. flamenco tap shoes? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like, it kicks ass with those on. It does. So, we'll go through a couple of the others quite quickly. Okay. For the Lady Hell, there's a track called Living Dead Girl. And for Scarly... Yeah. Snow Patrol. <laughs> a track called Life on Earth. <laughs> Snow Patrol. I love it. Uh, because reasons. Yeah, yeah. V- fitting. Fit- I was going to be fitting. Be fitting. Yes. Yep. Fitting too. For Baldur. The Shining One. The Shining One, yeah. There are two tracks. Shine by Take That. For The Shining One. For The Shining One. <laughs> because it's this big, uplifting, positive track. Yeah. And that is brilliant for me. Yeah. And Titanium by Sia. Titanium, yes. <laughs> now that one is the one that's basically yeah, t- sh- Titanium Shiny Metal. 
I, I don't know, but that's... Titanium that's... shiny metal, but also you shoot me with bullets and I don't fall. I yeah. am titanium, because yeah. he is, he's invulnerable. After Frigga sings her spell song of, of love for her son to the universe... Yeah. ...and gets everything to promise not to hurt him, he is titanium, nothing... He's briefly invulnerable. Him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Briefly. So I love... But yes, it's good. That, to me, is a lovely connection. Yeah. There are three that remind me of the Ragnarok, that have different aspects of the Ragnarok. Okay. Adele's Skyfall. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Jethro Tull's Broadsword. Oh, that one I don't know. I see a dark sail on the horizon Set under a black cloud that hides the sun Bring me my broadsword and clear understanding Bring me my cross of gold as a talisman. Yeah, I do know that one. Okay. Now you sing it. And um, come with me. Come with me now. Come with me now. Come with me now by Congos. I know, it's a big stumpy track. It's a big stumpy track. that reminds me of the preparation for the Ragnarok. There is a track that reminds me of the Iron Hair Yar. And it might be that it's to some folks' liking and it might not. But there's a reason behind my madness. When I hear the theme to the first Police Academy, that to me is the Ein Yar. Because it's a, a group of people who find themselves thrown together and they end up working through their differences and saving the city yeah. because of it. It is a fantastic piece of music, though. It is a lovely, lovely piece of music. And it's, it's uplifting, it's positive. It's a group of people who wouldn't normally find themselves together, but they've all come together for that one thing. In the case of the film, there's all of these different people have signed on to be police officers. Yeah. And they're all from different backgrounds. They've all got different experiences. They've all got different fears and they've all got different things they love. And they, in the process of being together, they learn to work together as a unit yeah. to end up saving the city in the climax of the film. And it just... I don't know, brings up a huge sense of pride of holding the line. When yeah. I hear it, that's what I have yeah. in my head. And that's the feeling it brings up for me. Quite aside from the, the, the comedy of the films and the yes. humour of the films. It's, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it, it, not, not a choice that one might have expected, but no, it but works. For me, it works. It mm. might not work for everybody else. This whole episode is UPG and it's yeah. an invite to go and think, well, what piece of music would represent the Iron Hair Yar for me? Mm. What piece of music would represent Frey for me? If Frey is the Vanir that I most connect with, yeah. can I make a whole 20-track playlist that reminds me solely of him? Yeah. That I can put on my car on my way to work or put on in my house. After ritual, to him, I can then put his playlist on to chill out to and sit and settle with people afterwards. Yeah, well, I mean, you can go in, you can go into whatever level of detail you want. I guess you can, you know, a, a whole, a whole sort of two-hour playlist or whatever devoted to one particular person, yeah. or or um, you know, try and squeeze the entire pantheon into a couple yeah, of songs. You, can, you know, it's... you can get you know one song per deity mm. into a whole mixtape full of stuff. You could do one song per realm. Yeah. Two songs per realm. There are two that remind me of Midgard. Okay. And one of them is a song called Hammer of Bronze. Yeah. Yeah. The one about building a cabin at the edge of the woods with a warm yeah. fire in the evening. Gonna build me a cabin at the edge of the woods with a warm fire every evening. Yeah. And the other one is Sandy Tum's I'm a Human Being. I believe in love and I love being, being a human, human being. being, yes. Yes. Yes, I do remember that one. So those two remind me of Midgard, which says to me that I could then try and look at putting two songs together per nine worlds and I've suddenly got a track list of 18 tracks. Yeah. So I can put them in order of the worlds, put a couple in there for the Yggdrasil and suddenly it's a 20 track playlist about the worlds. Fun and games, go play. <laughs> yeah, go yeah, find like it. Yeah. the tracks that resonate your face with you yeah. 
there's more than enough music that any yeah. any genre or subgenre or category or whatever you want to you want to pick from, you're gonna we'll find have... plenty of yeah. Of, of so, stuff. I guess this is our our invite to you is to go see what's out there mm. and maybe consider making a playlist of your own. Yeah. Maybe start with the ones that I've come up with, and you think no, those aren't my thing. Let's find your thing. Let's let's help you heathen your way see how, <laughs> see, see how the music speaks to you and see who speaks to you through the music when you hear one of those songs out of context and it's in a, a shopping center a shopping mall or it's on somebody else's radio while you've got the windows down the it, I, it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand on end yeah. <laughs> because i'm like oh hello <laughs> well, i suppose that i suppose that's no that's no bad thing is it yeah. to, to to sort of to be able to bring your Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm always very careful with words like religious and so forth because I know, you know, people. But to, people, yeah. but you, to bring that awareness, awareness of, the of faith into in, an everyday moment. Yeah, yeah, is what I love. Yeah. So yeah, I've I've sat and then had the the radio on in the kitchen, and heard Skyfall by Adele, and suddenly had to just stop and listen and hide under and the table. And suddenly that association is there for me, and that connection is there for me. There's one last track that I've come across. It's the one I'm going to leave you with. Go on, a PS. A PS track <clears throat> of, you know, you might want to have songs that represent aspects of the different gods and goddesses. Yeah. But you might also want to look at songs that represent the relationships between gods and goddesses. Okay. My final two songs are ones I imagine one member of the, the AC and Vani is saying to another... Okay. So the first one is Frigga to Odin. Yeah. Saying, the first time ever I saw your face. That's a good one. That's a good song. And the second one, probably the one that started this all off a few weeks ago, was... When I heard Adele's hello on the radio. Okay. Hello, it's me. I've been wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet. To go over everything. You say the time is supposed to heal ya, but I ain't done much healing. Hello, can you hear me? That one. That one? I know that one. And suddenly I got an image of Loki tied to the rock with a snake venom on him. Okay. And his wife doing her best to catch the snake venom and to take it away from him. <clears throat> but he's singing to Odin and he's saying, do you remember what it was like when we were sworn brothers and you wouldn't get a drink without seeing that I was served one? Yeah. Do you remember all the good things that we did together before it all ended up like this? Yeah. And suddenly Adele's hello, he's laid there in the dark, calling out to his blood brother, saying, do you remember what we were? Yeah. Do you remember what it was like? Hello, can you hear me? Mm. And you're just like... Mm. And that sparked a whole new set of connections off in my head. Yeah. Um, so we're going to leave you with that thought. Go have fun creating your own playlists. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's good fun for me finding the connections in other things and finding those things that connect. And if you are somebody that doesn't feel that they can share their faith openly yet, that's all good. Hmm. Consider making yourself a playlist for the car or for yeah. the house or on your MP3 player for going to work and you can keep those connections with you just something to keep the keep it all rolling over in your head. Yeah, keep um, that awareness of faith yeah. and that deepening awareness of faith. And this might be a good moment to say that if people wish to share any of them... Oh, that would be awesome, they're wouldn't not, it? You're not obliged, obviously. Yeah, we've, we've, that would be wicked. You know, we've said a number of times it's a, it's a very personal thing. And obviously, you know, we don't, uh, we don't ask you yeah, to... Yeah, we're not going to kind of demand you share it. But, but say yeah, you if you want, feel like it... Say you wanted to, to give us some of your ideas as to, as to who you think might go with what song or yeah. what song might describe what moment or, or whatever, please feel free to do that. And say they want to share with you directly, Suzanne, 
Yeah. How would they contact you? Well, if you want to find me online, you can find me on Facebook as Suzanne Martin. You can find me on Twitter at Suzanne Tack, which is T-A-C. You can drop me a message. You can drop me a friend request. My messages are always open. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. It's all good. Fair dues. And if, should anybody, for whatever reason, want to contact me, you can probably best find me on my website at glassrain.net. Uh, which will link to my Twitter account, where I'm normally having arguments with people, so don't bother. Um, <laughs> you are not. I have been recently. <laughs> I have been recently. I get occasionally. I get, you know, it's like somebody prods a, 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 a wasp's nest or whatever, and I get all kind of waspy. Covered um, in bees. Covered in bees. Uh, and and also to my Facebook account, which is which is a lot calmer and more peaceful because I mainly just use it for contacting yeah, people. Yeah, it's all good. So do that. So yeah, lovely want. listeners. Consider making a playlist. Have fun making your playlists. And we will talk to you all next time. We will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.